choose to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt ring. Right, the bouncer's guilt ring. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by Jamie Moore in Dublin, Ireland. Jamie, I do need to ask a, a burning question. Do you feel disrespected a bit that we're back in Dublin again for this rematch, seeing as you know Chantel is the A side? No, I don't. I don't take it that personal. You know, it's a. Uh, at the end of the day, for whatever reason, uh, Eddie and Matchroom have decided to come back. It's, it's all business. It's nothing personal. And um, of course, Chantel is a bit aggrieved that she felt like she it should have been at least neutral ground. But there's no point crying over spilt milk. It is what it is, and, and we're here, and uh, you just move on. You you were quite confident up there of Chantel. Chantel seems confident herself. Eddie, you know, talked about the fact she said she thinks she'll destroy Kitty this time. Do you truly believe that she has the power to take Kitty Taylor out of there on November 25th? I think she can do a much better job than last time. Um, whether, whether Katie can bring it better this time remains to be seen. I believe she can because she's that type of athlete. She's got that mindset. The reason she's took the rematch is because she obviously believes and feels like she will. Um, but I, I know Chantel can perform better. So, so that's why I said it'll be a better fight this time. And, um, you know, do I think she can stop her? Yeah, I thought she could stop her the first time. Um, I think Katie started slower than I thought she would last time. So if she starts faster this time, it might sort of go the way I thought it would do the first time. But, uh, but I, know, I know Chantel's got it, it within her to stop her. Whether she will or not remains to be seen, but I, I still firmly believe she'll win and win emphatically. I think it's it's fair to say that last time around, Katie Taylor was a bit of an unknown quantity as a professional. I know they met as amateurs, but it's a lot different. This time around, because they've had the experience of sharing the 10 rounds together, do you believe that that benefits Chantel? Yeah, of course. I mean, she always believed that she'd win, but it was more so my belief in her that she thought she would win because I'd believed in her in the past and I told her stuff what would happen and it all sort of come to fruition. So... Even though she was apprehensive about coming, she was she was sort of confident in herself. Well, that's sort of magnified by times ten now because she's actually been here and she knows she can beat her. So, um, so that confidence coupled with uh, knowing that she can perform better, you know, was watching back and analysing where the few little mistakes what she made wrong and where they're only small mistakes or, or things what she could have done differently. But adjusting that makes a big difference in the overall performance she makes those adjustments I think it'll be more emphatic and I, I think she can stop her I don't think we should go looking for that It'd be stupid but I really believe that she can make it more emphatic and um, and you know wh whether she stops her or not remains to be seen not looking past Kitty of course but if Chantel is victorious what's next for her where, where do you want to see her go next I, honestly there's, there's really no point in, in uh, looking that far ahead because um, this is sort of the be-all and end-all. Katie Taylor, like, it'd be ridiculous to even suggest that we're talking, thinking about looking looking ahead because, you know, Chantel, even though people are talking about Katie's age, you know, she's 37 and she's past the best and stuff, but Chantel's no spring chicken. Chantel's 32. So, you know, you're talking about, if, if Katie Taylor turns it around and beats Chantel, who's used to say that that's not the end of Chantel's career. So, so we can't afford to look past this. And um, I know she's not doing um, there's no one else on our minds other than Katie Taylor, and rightly so, because she deserves that respect. Moving on from this fight, you've got Jack Catterall up in a tough fight against Jorge Linares coming up. How's Jack looking in camp, and really looking forward to seeing him back in there? Yeah, mate, he's looking so, so good. You know, he's because um, of the inactivity, um, I'm now starting to understand how important it is, even more so, about, you know, r uh, rounds in the ring and stuff, because he's... he's uh, his form now, going off the back of him being active, he's just, he's, he's sort of night and day compared to where he's been before. His timing's much better, his fitness, his, his, his judgment of distance. And, um, you know, he's, he's 30 years old now and he's coming into his prime and I really feel you're going to see a special performance. Will this be a real common of AIDS night for Jack Catterall, do you believe? Like a, a name like Jorge Linares, whether or not you believe he's over the, the hills and other thing, but you think that this is Jack Catterall's time? Well, it's a, it's a big name on his record, and and yeah, of course, we, you know, we're not um, 
going around saying that Lenares is, is, is a prime Lenares. We know he's past his best, but I'm, the most thing I'm happy about is that Jack's active. You know, inactivity, he's had one fight in 30 months. He's nowhere near good enough for a fighter at his stage um, and at his level of ability. So just the fact that he's fighting is, is, is a positive for me. The fact that he's fighting someone like Lenares, who even though he's past his best, he's still dangerous and can still punch. So it'll, it, he's the perfect uh, scenario in terms of it'll make sure Jack is totally focused and switched on because he knows that if he if he's not, it could be lights out and that's it. But um, but it's, it's, a, it's a name where it makes him hungry and he knows that if he can do a good, good number on him, it's a good name on his record, it puts him in the perfect position then for the for the winner of Pro Grey and, and, and Heine if it comes off. Pro Grey and Heine obviously looks as if it's going to be made. Would you prefer that fight for Jack or do you want that revenge against Josh Taylor? Is it still in the back of his mind? I just, I, it, nothing's personal in my eyes. It's, it's, all, it's all sport. I want Jack Catterall to fulfil his ambition of being a world champion and, and he should have been and the next fight for me I, I believe should have been Regis Progre and then Haney popped his head up and, and that sort of threw his spanner in the works but Eddie was talking to us about that could be the next fight so of course I want him to be a world champion he deserves it I, f I feel he can beat Regis Progre um, so, so we'll just have to see what happens but without a doubt I'd love him to get the winner of that fight Richardson Hitchens came out at the weekend and after his, his win he said that he wants Jack Catterall and he was speaking to Eddie in the corridor about it is that a fight that you would welcome as well? I, mate, I have no idea who that is, to be honest with you. I, I didn't watch the fight. I'm not, I'm not not being disrespectful, but I didn't see the fight, so, so I wouldn't want to comment on it because I don't really want to talk about anything what I don't know about, you know. Last one from me, Sandy Ryan. I don't know if you've seen it or you watched it. What did you make of that, that whole situation against Picasso? I, I haven't seen the fight, but I've read that it was a really bad decision. And um, and, it, and if it is, I, you know, I feel for her because we've been in that position before and I've seen the backlash. It's not nice. It's not good for boxing. And um, What needs to change in boxing, though, for that? I've spoke about this so many times. And, and one of them is, I, I'm still a big believer in this. The 10-point must system is needs to be utilised better. So, so it, it, it sounds like really simple this, so to, 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 to understand why it's not used is really insane. But if, if, if you're boxing a journeyman and the journeyman doesn't throw a punch out for the whole round and you beat him all four rounds, you, you win 40-36. Or you fight somebody who's really having a go and, and he, it's, you only just win all four rounds, you still win 40-36. So there's no movement in the, the size you've won the round, even though you've got a 10 point system. So why not utilize the 10 points better? So for instance, if, if I'm boxing you and I win the round and it's quite competitive, but I win it, then it's a 10-8 or a 10-7. Or if, or if I only just win it, it's a 10-9. Or if I piss it and knock you down, it's 10-4 or 10-5. That's how the 10 point system should be used. Then you'd sort of basically eradicate draws because there'd be very, very few times when all three judges would score around the same. Jamie Murray needs a meeting with all the, the board. Sit me down That's with it. the British Boxing Board of Control. This is, this is the problem though. If we say, say Britain decided to introduce it, you've got every single different organisation across the world. There's no one overseeing governing body. And until we get that, then... You, you could revolutionise boxing here, make, make a lot, lot of money. Just someone, That's it. Someone fund it and I'm doing it. Let's go. <laughs> Jimmy Murray, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it, mate. You need to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never, never shut, shut up about it. It uh, must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 